What we're working on in this video is how to graph square roots. Now let's think about square roots. If we just look at some random square roots, so let's look at uh, square root of negative one, of zero, of one, two, three, and four. Um, the square root of negative one, square roots can't be negative. So in the domain of real numbers, it, it doesn't exist. So this is not a real number. But the square root, of, square root of zero is zero. The square root of one is one. The square root of two, if you use a calculator, is 1.41 uh, and change. The square root of three is 1.73 and change. And the square root of four is two. So we can see that some of these are easy to square root. We call them perfect squares. So zero, one, four, nine, 25 are perfect squares. And we can see that other numbers that are not perfect squares, they're irrational numbers or numbers that uh, are fraction that are, that are um, decimals that go on forever and never repeat. So if I want to graph something like this and I didn't have a calculator, what I'd want to do is just look at the perfect squares. I'd want to look at square root of zero, square root of one, square root of four, and square root of nine. I would usually stick with those three numbers because they're small. And we know that the square root of zero is zero, the square root of one is one, the square root of four is two, and this is three. Now the reason why I chose these numbers and not the square root of two and square root of three is because square root of two and square root of three is some ungodly horrible decimal number that goes on forever. I want to deal with numbers that are nice, pretty, and natural numbers. Now, if we sort of do the pattern matching, right, we, we're basically saying um, this is what y is equal to. We could see that in order to make this look like this, x would need to be 0, right? If I plug in 0 into here, I would get that. If I plug in 1 into here, I would get that. If I let x equal 4, it would equal that, and then this would be equal to 9. Now, to make this easier to graph, what I would do is I would go, I would just write them separately now. 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2, and 9, 3. And these are the points that I would graph. So let's look at this, right? 0, 0 is here. 1, 1 is here. 4, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 2 would be here. And 9, 3 would be over here. So these would all connect. Now the question is, is there an arrow over here or is there an arrow over here? Now, I could keep on listing perfect squares. So for example, if I had 25, I would have uh, square root of 25 is equal to five, and I guess 16 square root of 16 is equal to four. We could see that this in this direction, we could keep listing perfect squares that get bigger and bigger and bigger. So as the x's get bigger, this would go on forever. But we could see that we can't go upwards. We can't get smaller because if I plug in a negative 1 for x, I would get square root of negative 1, and that doesn't exist. Now let's try graphing something a little more complex. So we have y equals square root of x plus 5. So the problem here is that um, I only know how to do the square root of perfect squares. So square root of 0, square root of 1, square root of 4, and square root of 9. That's what I need inside the square root. But the problem is, is that what's inside the square root in the actual thing that we're graphing is a little more complex. So what I really want to know is, what can I add to 5 and get 0? In this case, it would be negative 5. See how negative 5 plus 5 is equal to 0? So I would need x to be equal to negative 5 in order to get a y that's a perfect square. Now, if we look at this one over here, I want the inside of this, after I resolve the expression, to be equal to 1. So what can I subtract from 5 so it turns into a 1, and that would be a negative 4? So then my x would be a negative 4. 
See how if x is negative 4, it sort of matches that? Okay. Now, for some of you, I've done this twice, you're having a hard time seeing this connection. Another way of doing it is saying that I want this interior to be equal to 4. And you can just solve that expression. I could subtract 5 from both sides, and I would get x is equal to negative 1. And we could see that negative 1 plus 5 is equal to 4. So then my x would be negative 1. And if we use that technique again, I want the inside of this to be equal to 9. x plus 5 is equal to 9. If I subtract 5 from both sides, I get x is equal to 4. And we can see that, okay, 4 plus 5 is equal to 9. That seems to work. So in order to make this work, x would have to be equal to 4. Now, when I want to look at the xy coordinates to graph, the square root of 0 is 0, square root of 1 is 1, square root of 4 is 2, square root of 9 is 3, and we would graph the coordinate points of minus 5, comma, 0, minus 4, comma, 1, minus 1, comma, 2, and then 4, comma, 3. Okay, so let's graph these points. Minus 5, 0 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Minus 4, 1 would be 1, 2, 3, 4. Minus 1, 2 would be here. And 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 3 would be here. And that this can get bigger because perfect squares can get bigger. 0, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36. But they can't get smaller, so we have the arrow on this side and no arrow on that side. Now let's do one more of these problems. Again, what we want is the inside of the square root to become a perfect square. So the perfect squares we've been using have been square root of 0, square root of 1, square root of 4, and square root of 9. So what we want to happen is we want to pick an x where this whole thing turns into something that looks like this. Now, some of you will just look at this and you'll say what plus negative, what plus 3 is equal to 0? Uh, negative 3. For those of you who can't see it, you can just say x plus 3 is equal to 0. I want this interior to look like that. So I get x is equal to uh, negative 3. So over here we have, I'm sorry, negative 2, negative 3 plus 3 is equal to this ugly thing. And when we resolve it, we get negative 2 times 0 is equal to 0. So the point I'm going to graph is minus 3 comma 0. Now we're going to do that with all of these. So I want to know what number I can put in here and get 1, right? x plus 3 is equal to 1. X is equal to negative 2. So I have negative 2 square root of negative 2 plus 3 is equal to this thing, which then turns into uh, negative 2 times 1 is equal to negative 2. So we wanted X to be equal to negative 2. The point I'm going to graph is negative 2 comma negative 2. Now, for some people, they'll see it. What can I add to 3? So I'll get 4, and that would be a 1. So this would be negative 2 square root of 1 plus 3 is equal to that. And then this will turn into um, negative 2 times 2 is equal to negative 4. So the number I put in was 1. Um, was one. So the point I'm going to graph is 1 comma negative 4. And this last one is... Um, Let's see, what can I add to 3 to get 9? That would be 6. Uh, square root of 6 plus 3. But x equals 6. So square root of 9 is 3. And then that turns into negative 6. So the point I'm graphing is 6 comma negative 6. Now let's graph this ugly thing. We're starting with negative 3, 0. So 1, 2, 3 here. 
negative 2, 2, so negative 2, 2, 1, negative 4, and then 6, negative 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now remember, we can't get smaller because then we'll get a negative square root, but we can always get bigger. So we have an arrow on that side, this side. Thanks for watching this video.